Yeah. 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 Perfect. So I'll ask you please to have a good applause for uh, Julien Jérôme from Vaudois. So thanks for coming. We are going to talk about the really long journey to an API community of practice in a 125 years old company, uh, old insurance company. What we are going to tell you is true, but is not the truth. That's just the, we're just sharing our experience and hope it could help you. As you can guess, I'm not a native speaker, so I hope you will be kind with my English. So. Let me introduce ourselves. This is Julien. He, he's the f he is a mathematician. He's the father of Olivia. He plays squash very, very well, and he's a geek. I'm Jerome. I'm a software developer. I'm bringing my own my own beer, and I'm playing golf, and I'm a geek as well. <laughs> so feel free to reach us on LinkedIn or just come to talk to us just after this presentation. We work in Switzerland, in the French part of Switzerland, in a medium-sized insurance company, which has 1,500 employees. And as I said at the beginning, next year we are going to celebrate its 125th birthday. As it's a quite old company, the IT is quite old too. We have a mainframe, we have COBOL developers, and we have to manage this legacy every day. And it starts with a small team of three people at the beginning only. And it, it grew up a little bit to 180 people today. About the IT department, we have two key numbers. It's half of the IT have been, has been engaged after 2015, which means we have a lot of new people. And on the other hand, the average employee seniority is more than 10 years. It means that you have two distinct mentalities that have to work together with different practices, with different mindset, and different way to work in a daily business. With, Julia, with Julien, we are in this new wave of employees, and we start working in 2015. And a few months after we start working at Wodwas, we discovered how the APIs look like, looks like, and we have a problem. Every single APIs we look at was a mess. Do you want examples? First one, same data with multiple data sources. Imagine that you have a, a team that needs to consume some data. They will create their own API. And if you've got the team B, they will create the, their own API with their own naming, their own properties, their own based on their needs. And it's getting worse. Because sometimes the data is copied, duplicated, and consumed by another team with other properties. And maybe they use batch and they transform the data. And the worst case we found at what was, the data has been duplicated 14 times. So you can easily imagine every update is a nightmare. Each service has been adapted, modified, transformed, and it's a, night, a real nightmare. On the other hand, the API itself is a mess, is weird. You've got a mix of French and English. <laughs> You've got XML inside JSON. You've got even an HTTP override. The KO is not a typo, it, this is real. And to summarize, our APIs were duplicated for each customer, consumer. The signature was hard to understand, and there is no documentation. You don't know what you will receive if it works, and you don't know what you will receive if it fails. There is no consistency in the naming. Properties some called sometimes this, sometimes that, and you don't know what it means because it's code, because COBOL developer used to have uh, strange naming. <laughs> and the worst case for me was the override of the HTTP basics. And now we are in December 2016. It's been a year that we are working at the Vaudois with Julien. And we, we want to do something for these APIs. We want to, to, to improve. So we start a wiki page. And with six other guys from our unit, we start writing something. We start writing guidelines. guidelines. When 
I want to retrieve data, I use the get verb. When I want to create data, I use the post. Basic things, but this is written somewhere. When I get an error, I should re receive an HTTP 400 something or HTTP 500 something, depends on the case. So in a collaborative, collaborative way, we start solving the problem. We start writing guidelines and that, we, that will help us to solve the mess in the uh, near future. So we were only six people in your unit and luckily top management decided to go in a full agile transformation. They engaged some coach and these guys start talking about something called the safe framework that describes a lot of things for the agile transformation of a medium sized company. And one thing that the safe framework is describing is the community of practice. And it gives a really huge and boring definition about that, but we can summarize it in six points. It's an organized group of people. We were, an we were people. We have a common interest in a specific technical domain that we want, sorry, we want to share some information. We want to improve our skills. And finally, we want autonomy. So we were a kind of community of practice without the name of community of practice. So as far as we listen to this definition, we created another wiki page called community of practice. We start having a place for our meetings. So we start sharing the information. We created a distribution list to have an offline messaging some, and a Skype chat room to have an instant messaging. So everyone in the com company could reach us at any moment of the, the day. And the SAFE framework describes different kinds of role for the community of practice. The first one is a transactional. It means that these guys want to be involved in the community of practice, but he just wants to have feedback. He don't want to participate to meetings. He don't want to participate to any decision. He just wants to have information. You've got the occasional group. It means these guys want to be involved in the community of practice, but only when we think they can bring something to us. They don't want to participate to each meeting, but only when needed. Then we've got the most important group of a community of practice, which is the active one. Those four guys want to participate to the community of practice. They want to make meetings. They want to write guidelines. They want to make decisions about the APIs and really do a technical stuff. Finally, with Julien and uh, another guy called Stuart, we want to run the community of practice. We are not managers, we are technical guys, but we want to make the community living. So it means as core team, we book the rooms, we organize the meeting, we publish the meeting notes, and we'll do lobby to the other people in the company. So we start having a day-to-day -day for our API community of practice. We have some leaders that are not managers. This is really important. It should be technical guys that want to make the community running. They, to, they want to make the community living. And they will spend a lot of energy for that. You've got people that want to be involved to learn and share data, uh, information, sorry, about APIs. We have transparency because every single meeting notes or decision is available on our internal wiki. We are open-minded because everybody could join us. He just have to edit the wiki page and add his name in the group he is interested for, and he will be involved in this way. And finally, we start having meetings or workshops to write the guidelines, make them evolve, and answer to some questions because we don't cover all the things of APIs at the beginning. So we solved a new problem about the organization. We were a kind of anarchic guys in our unit, and luckily we have a way to be organized and recognized at the company-wide level because it's not just five guys in their desk. It's known for the whole company. There is an API community of practice for the APIs. But the problem is not over yet. And Julien? Thank you, Jérôme. So now I have 11 people. 
You have 11 people in this committee of practice, but it's not enough. You would like more people. So we would like to go from no one is interested by your API committee of practice to much more adoption. I'm sure all of you know this technology adoption curve and you have on the left side like the innovators and the early adopters and you have the, then the whole majority and the laggards. And we discovered that these 11 people are just the innovators and the early adopters. It was really easy to get these people in the committee of practice, but it's not enough. If, if you want to have impact, you need to have more people. So to have more people, what did we do? We had to talk to different kind of people. The first, IT managers then the product owners and the developers as well. So we went to the IT managers and we asked them for freedom to technical leaders. The reason is that if technical leaders do not have time, space and, and the right to work on these topics, there is no chance you can have a committee of practice about APIs, no chance. Then we ask for legitimacy because if you just have a group of people talking, talking about APIs, and they don't have the right to decide anything. They don't have, I mean, if you have a tough decision and in the end it's just the manager who decides, then what's the point of having people, having the technical expertise, makes no sense. Then you, ha you need to have support, two reasons. The first one is for tough decisions. Management has to say, yes, we believe in you, the committee of practice. The second one is, it's a long journey. So at some point, the management has to say, yeah, guys, Keep doing what you do. It's important for the company. They need to support you. Then we went to the product owners. And to convince these this people, we talked about something they understand the most, money. The reason is that we talked about money is that they know if you have a feature, they want to know how much it costs. So this is something they understand. So we had to find a way to explain these people that if you have a committee of practice and if you have guidelines, then in the long run, it's going to cost less money to have features. So they have to understand this. That's the, the thing we, we use to, 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 to uh, motivate these people. Sorry. Then we discovered that if you have guidelines just made by two people, two geeks in a room, and nobody will recognize it, then it's not going to work. You need to have guidelines that, have, that are recognized by the whole IT. And if you have that, then product owners will just rely on it. They will believe that it's the truth and they will accept that at the very beginning of these guidelines, it takes more time. But they need to understand that it's not, it is not something made by just two people. It's something recognized by the whole IT. And you have to talk about it. You have to talk about APIs. You have to talk about community of practice all the time because it's a very old company, meaning that you have very old mindset. So these people have no idea what a community of practice is. API, pff, I don't care, you just do your, your stuff. No, you have to talk about it. Could be at the coffee machine, could be at meetings, anytime, just talk about it. Then you have the developers, and for the same reason, you have to communicate a lot. Because we have people who work for the company for 30 years. That means they need to understand what a community of practice can bring to them. You need to communicate. Could be town hall meetings, could be blog posts, could be emails. Could be, uh, I don't know, just a poster when you get out the elevator. Just find everything you can, you can do to communicate to these people. Touch them. Then you need to organize trainings. The reason you need to organize trainings is that you need to have people with more, um, uh, to, to improve their, their level, sorry. You can do optional, meet, optional trainings for these people, so people in Trussell would come. But at some point, you're going to have to go to the management and say, these people, they have to learn about APIs. And we organize trainings, so you have to tell these people that they must come. They don't have the choice. At some point, you need sheriffs. If you don't have this, people will never come and will never join you, the committee of practice or your, your, uh, the topics you, you train. And then organize fun events. Easy one. Just buy croissant. You invite people and you talk about APIs. That's an easy one. Then the second one, last year, we organized an advent calendar. So the 24th first day of December, we ask one question per day about APIs. And people had to answer these questions. And at the end, it was a contest, two winners. They had, they had prizes. So people learned about APIs without knowing it. Then the last one, thanks to API Days 2018, they organized an, amaz an amazing maze, uh, which, which was going through a maze with APIs very good. We used the same concept, and we had 
like, I don't know, 30 questions about APIs again inside this maze, and people had just to find the exit, answer the questions, and we had two prizes, and it's two people who will join us in API Days Paris 2019 next month. So I think fun events can help to get more people in your community of practice. Did we mention to communicate a lot? You have to communicate to people because they don't care about your community of practice. They don't care about API at first. Just talk about it all the time. Then, you have, we have three kind of people, as I said, managers, uh, product owners, and developers. And this is what it looks like at Vaudoise. We had eight IT managers, 15 product owners, and roughly 80 developers. So going to these eight managers was quite easy because it's only eight people. Well, it takes time, you need to convince them, but it's only eight people. Going to 15 product owners was okay as well. I mean, you have <laughs> to take a lot of energy to convince them, but it's only 15. Problem is 80 people. For me, for Jérôme and I, going to talk individually to 80 people, it's a lot of people. We didn't manage to touch all these people yet, but it's a goal. But for us, it's the hardest group of people to convince. So we think, even though we don't have the whole community of developers involved, we have now more adoption because we talk about APIs every single day. And we have more legitimacy. We went to the management and they support us. So we solved the problem. But we think it's not over yet. It's not that easy because it has to be a bottom-up approach. It cannot be one manager saying, hey, you're going to be running the community of practice, hey, you. If, if you don't have natural leaders, then it's not going to work. You, you don't have the chance. It takes way, way too much energy. If you want to fight for the cause, if you want just to make it running, it takes too much energy. You need to have people motivated. Then, as I said, in a cherish, at some point, the management has to say, yes, we believe in them, and they can make tough decisions. You need, uh, we, we tried for two years um, without this, and we got stuck because we only had 11 people who joined the community of practice. Now we want more, and it has to be more people. It's so important in a company that old. Spread the word, communicate. I think I said it four times. If you didn't remember that, it's bad. We saw that motivation decreases over time. It's been almost three years now. Um, we think the main reason is that at the very beginning of the community of practice, we knew why we were having and running a community of practice. We knew why. We needed guidelines. We needed a group of people interested in the same topic. But now that we have more people, it's not the case anymore. People don't know why we have this. They don't, they don't know why we have guidelines. Somet sometimes they don't care. So we'd like to work on this and make sure in the future that uh, people know why we are running a community of practice. And we think the problem will never, ever be solved because you have people leaving the company. You have new people joining the company. So it's an ongoing fight, an everyday fight. So we will keep fighting for this cause be because we think API, especially with a community of practice, is so important. Still, we are very, very happy about a couple of key numbers or facts. As of today, we have 29 members to our community of practice, 29 people involved in, in the API um, topics. It's a huge number of people for us. We have guidelines. The version is 1.1, and they are available on GitHub. If you want to go check and give us feedback, please do it. And to build these guidelines, we had 15 people, and 15 people, member of the community of practice, who give their inputs. They just came, and they build it. It's not the best ever technical architect expert who did the guideline in his office, and now you have to apply it. No, it's 15 people, so you have much more adoption. We had over 20 meetings for the community of practice just to talk about APIs, to answer questions, to train people, to build guidelines. And as of today, over 30 APIs respect these new guidelines. So we are very happy about that. But it's a very old company. We have hundreds of APIs. So 30 is not enough for sure. But 30 is a good start. And the last one is a good example. The community of practice came and said, you have to do review of your API design before implementation. That was the idea. Then we asked for support for, from the IT management. They said yes. So as of today, every single API that is made or updated has to be reviewed before implementation. That's very good. So over 42. We are very happy about it. That was all we wanted to share with you. It was just our experience. Thank you very much.
please come and talk to us about your experience. And if you have just one minute to grab your phone, go on menti.com, use that code and give us feedbacks about this talk, about the content, about the speakers, especially Jerome, please, and anything else you want. Thank you very much for your time. Welcome. Um, back in 2015, um, I assume you were part of the core IT team. You mean the yeah. core team of the, of, yeah, yeah, from the beginning, yeah. Who funded you in the beginning to build this community? Uh, who founded us, you mean? Yeah. I mean, we just discovered uh, this problem and we said, we're just gonna go and, and, and. We need to do something. We need to do something. Okay. It was a bottom up approach. Nobody came to us, it was like, it's too messy. We have to do something. But as he said, we didn't know we were doing a community of practice at first. It took us a year to discover that it was a community of practice. That, that means you, you did this on top of your normal tasks. Yeah. yeah. So no extra budget, no sponsor. No. Okay. No. Just passion. Yeah. yeah. But now I think the whole IT and even the whole company knows about us because we talk a lot <laughs> about it. Problem is, yes, of course, for the, the unit we are in, it's quite easy because it's only 15 people. But then you have 60 other people and like four or five other units where we don't have any influence. I mean, we are not in the interviews, so we cannot, so we just try to spread the word and make sure that the managers will hire people with this kind of man mindset. But if you want tomorrow to hire someone who do COBOL, then you don't have that many choices. And we are quite lucky because we, as technical guys, can participate to the interview of the candidates. So there, there is a first filter from the human resource. Then the guys came and with other technical guys, we rush a lot of questions. I would say the first one is we waited for two years before having sheriffs. I say sheriffs, but it's like we thought that just bringing um, the key points about why an API is good for, for the company was enough to have people joining and people understanding the, the benefit was not the case. At some point, you have like, I think we have between 10 and 15 people who will never join if they are not forced by the management. So this is one of the key points for me. Some, at some point, you need to tell them, follow this. This is the truth. But you brought the letter. As I understood from what you said, it developed naturally at first, and then at some point, maybe earlier than you did. Yeah, yeah exactly. Two years is a long time. Right. You lose a lot of energy. For me. The community itself. So we had meetings, and so for an example, next week we have a meeting. We are going to talk about the the header uh, for the request. So I prepared a proposition for this text, and the community will discuss about that, and maybe if they will add or not the text on the the guideline. Okay, so you're so working with the proposal. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that we had a period of time they were looking for new CTO for the whole company and we had freedom in this period of time. Ah. 
So we took the chance, the opportunity to just sneak in. I think that's one of our chances. Yeah. Organizational chart breach. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we have time. We have just three weeks, right? Exactly. I would say most of our guidelines are just basic stuff. But just basic stuff was not followed. So everyone was okay with this basic stuff. We didn't have endless discussion. And when we have meetings, our community of practice meetings, we have we just time box them. Because at some point you don't have a choice. And you need to have leaders, and it's not managers, but leaders who say, okay, this topic, it's been it's been 45 minutes that we that we've been talking about, just we have to do something. Either you go back and you work for it on two weeks and you come back with a new proposal, or we stop right now. It's just leaders who try to box it. I don't know how you say it. But we, we had endless discussions. 